This one is 2.6 where we have a stiff member AB which is horizontal before the load and this 20 kN is applied. There are three truss members here ED, BD and BC. These are fastened with pins. So these are pins right here. What we need to find is the force in member BD and the horizontal and vertical movement at point A. Because we are interested in the movements here, so let's write down these movements in terms of these two forces P and Q, where Q value is 20 kN here, but P is going to be 0 because it doesn't exist in the problem. So we are going to set up this problem in terms of P and Q and later on substitute the values that are given. Now uh, these pins here, because of these attachments, we will expect one reaction going this way here because only one truss is there which can provide only vertical reaction but at this point we may have two reactions one in y direction and one in x direction now we can do the force and moment balance for member a b so x force balance will give us f b x plus p equals to zero y force balance will give us f e plus f b y both of these is going to balance your Q force there and if I take moment about this point A here then 4 times F E plus 6 times F B Y is equals to 0. So from this relationship here we can see that F E is minus 3 over 2 F B Y. So if I substitute back into this equation so minus 3 over 2 FBY plus FBY which is minus FBY divided by 2 equals to Q. So this gives us FBY equals to minus 2Q and if I use this relationship my FE comes out to be plus 3Q there. And FBX from this relationship is already known which is fbx equals to minus p here. Now these are the <coughs> forces that are present on bar ab. Now if I look at your truss structure which is this right here. Now these reactions will be present on this truss member in exactly opposite direction. So fe goes here your fbx goes there and your fby goes in this way okay and we have already got the values of this now if i start analyzing these individual joints so let's look at joint e first so on joint e the forces that we have are this fe that is pointing downwards and this member fed between d and e if you draw it away from the joint then this is the setup we have so from this we can figure out your fde is minus fe which is minus 3 times q similarly if i draw the free body diagram at so this was your joint e similarly if i do it for joint b <coughs> one force going this way FBC, one going this way, FBD, and the reaction forces that are present there. So your FBY goes down, and FBX goes to the left. Now we can write down the force balance equation. So for X force balance, we are going to have FBX plus FBD because the angle is 45. Because this is 2 meters here and 2 meters there that's why square root 2 comes there equals to 0 similarly in the y direction fby plus fbd divided by square root 2 plus fbc equals to 0 now fbx is known to us the value of fbx is minus p from here if i substitute minus p there then your fbd is p times square root 2 so we got fbd there fde is already known here now in the last equation here i can substitute the value of fby 
which is minus 2q from here so minus 2q fbd is p square root 2 so this becomes p plus fbc equals to 0 if i solve this your fbc is 2q minus p so now in the first part we are asked that what is the force in member bd so this is the force in fbd but this is written in terms of p which is a fictitious force which doesn't exist in the problem so the value of p is going to be zero so therefore for the given forces your fbd value is going to be zero now these expressions that we have written here these are going to be used when we want to find out the vertical and horizontal deflection using the energy method so now this is the answer for your part a now for part b we are interested in the horizontal deflection at point a so for horizontal deflection at point a the horizontal force is p here so your strain energy will be derived with respect to p and similarly your vertical deflection here is going to be derivative of u with respect to q now the sense of displacement and force should be same so we are expecting your horizontal movement to be along p direction meaning towards the right and vertical going downwards so your derivative of u with respect to p can be written as your force in member ij times derivative of that force with respect to p times the stiffness of that member ij similarly your do u over do q can be written as member force fij derivative of fij with respect to q times the stiffness of your member ij so there are total three members here so those members are your de member your bd member and your bc member okay for these three members we will pick up these three values multiply them together and write the final answer so if you look at your member de Remember DE has a force which is minus 3Q. So we write minus 3Q here. Now the derivative of this force with respect to P is going to be 0. So it doesn't matter what we have here. So we can just skip this because anyway this is going to be 0. Now remember BD. Remember BD force is P square root 2. So we have P square root 2 here. Derivative with respect to P in this case is going to be square root 2. And the value of P because it's a fixed force is going to be zero in the end so again this term will become zero so we can skip this term now for bc member your force value is 2q minus p coming from here so this is 2q minus p now the derivative with respect to p is going to be minus one now when we substitute these values there the value of q here is going to be 20 kilonewtons and the value of p is going to be zero okay the length and other parameters there so this is going to be l2 meters elastic modulus e and your area which is area of bc member so area of bc member is 7 centimeters square so this is going to be 7 centimeters square here so if i substitute all these values in this equation your delta horizontal with q value 20 will be minus 40 kilonewtons because of this minus sign this will be multiplied with 2 meters and divided by elastic modulus 205 gigapascals times 7 centimeter square. So if I do this calculation, your delta horizontal can be calculated as 0 0.557 millimeters. In a similar manner, if you look at the vertical deflection, we can repeat this process here so force is minus 3q derivative with respect to q is minus 3 now in this case your length will matter so your de member is 2 meter height elastic modulus e and for de your area is given as 15 centimeter square so this becomes 15 centimeter square here now for the second one because p is appearing there the value of p is going to be zero anyway so this term is zero right here for the last one here your force is 2q minus p derivative with respect to q is going to be 2 length 2 meters 
divided by e into 7 centimeters square now again the value of q is going to be 20 kilonewtons here and here and the value of p is 0 so this is going to disappear there so in this case your delta vertical is going to be summation of these two terms i can take 2 meters divided by e common from both the terms here substituting the value of q equals to 20 there so this becomes 180 kilonewtons on top and in the denominator we have 15 centimeter square similarly from the second term we have 80 kilonewtons coming there divided by 7 centimeter square so if i do this calculation the value of delta v is 2.286 millimeters